Welcome, welcome everybody. We're gonna give it just a couple seconds as everybody comes on into the room. Um, but here we are uh, ready for our engineering student panel. So you're in the right spot if that's the Zoom that you were anticipating being in tonight. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm one of the admissions counselors. I'll have everybody introduce themselves in just a moment, but we'll um, give folks a few seconds just to kind of get in, get situated. We'll just hang tight for just a moment. Perfect. So once again, my name is Elizabeth and you are here in this engineering student panel um, as part of uh, this webinar series that Maine Maritime Academy is doing. You will notice right off the bat that we um, can't necessarily see you or hear you. Your camera is off. That's because we're in a webinar Zoom instead of that regular Zoom meeting, maybe hopefully <laughs> you experienced over the last year. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't wanna hear from you. Uh, so please definitely use that chat function down below, use that Q&A function. This session is for you. So we wanna make sure that you are coming here to get your questions answered, especially by our amazing student panelists who uh, have decided to give up their Thursday night to do this just for you all. So with no further ado, I'll pass it off to Kate. She'll introduce herself and we'll kind of go around the screen. Thanks, Elizabeth. Well, good evening, everyone. And thanks again for logging in on this um, Thursday evening to hear all about engineering. I'm Kate and I am the Associate Director of Admissions. And so tonight um, we will most certainly leave our contacts. Make sure you guys have that um, to be able to touch base with us if you have any questions afterwards. Um, but really it's, it's to highlight our students. Um, they are the ones that are living and breathing this. And so we wanna hear from them. And so what I'm gonna do is pass it off to Julia first. And Julia, if you can introduce yourself with um, your name, where you're from, what your major is in, why, maybe why you chose MMA. And um, after Julia, we're gonna to go to Matthew. Hi everyone, my name is Julia Malcolm. I'm a junior here at Maine Maritime and my major is uh, five-year marine systems engineering. I'm from Trenton, Maine, next to Bar Harbor in Ellsworth. And I chose Maine Maritime for the hands-on approach that they use and also because I saw this amazing um, friendship family bonding that was occurring when I visited campus between the upperclassmen and underclassmen. That's great, thank you. Matthew, if you can um, do a, a similar introduction, that'd be great. All right, my name is uh, Matthew Mock. I'm a class of 2025, and my major is Marine Engineering Technology. Uh, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and something that brought me to Maine Maritime was I really like the hands-on approach as well, and that the campus is in a small town. It's like very, and the campus is small, so. You get to know your teachers pretty one on one. It wasn't the snow that brought you here. <laughs> Jacob, I'm going to turn it to you next, and then now we'll kind of round out our marine side. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jacob Olson. I am from Charleston, Maine. My major is marine engineering technology. I'm on the soccer team here, and I'm also part of the strategic sea lift officer program in the ROTC unit. I chose Maine Maritime because I had two older brothers who came here, so I knew a lot about the school, but I mainly chose it just because there's endless opportunities upon graduation. Yes, endless opportunities upon graduation. We'll get into a little bit more um, about those opportunities um, throughout this program. Mark, I'm going to turn it to you. Uh, good evening, y'all. My name is Mark Cabrera. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas, and I am currently a senior studying in power engineering operations. Uh, I will definitely say the snow didn't bring me here, but it's <laughs> the hands-on approach, as long as a small environment, like Matthew said, uh, just getting getting to know your teachers and just, you know, just being able to know everybody, you know what I'm saying? It's it's more like a family here, um, and that, that caught my interest whenever I first came here, so yeah. 
So as you, um, those that are watching, you can see that we have a variety of engineering majors. And so feel free to interact with our students through that chat function and that question and answer function there. I'm keeping an eye to those. So hopefully we'll be able to get to all the questions and don't be shy, um, send them out because our students are here. They wanna make sure that you guys come away with what you'd like. So I'm gonna turn it to Elizabeth to uh, ask her first question. So these questions that we're asking, just so the audience knows, uh, when you registered, we asked if you wanted to pre-submit any questions. So we're basically driving the conversation entirely based on uh, what you all wanted to know. Um, so that's where these questions are coming from. But as Kate said, feel free to throw new ones into the mix, of course. Um, you all just touched on why you chose MMA, but if you remember back being a junior, a senior in high school, you're trying to figure out what you want to study. What led you to ultimately choose engineering? And if you want to, you can take it a detail further and say why you chose marine systems, marine engineering, technology, power, just sort of what, what brought you to that you know, choice. I think, Julia, just because you're first on my screen, I'll start with you and then we'll kind of go around. Um, when I was choosing my colleges, I decided that I wanted something maybe technology based. I um, was planning on going to RIT, WPI, things like that, that were a lot of technology based things, but I lived 40 minutes away from here and I never heard of it. But thankfully, there's this little hidden gem in Castine that I was introduced to randomly. And as soon as I got on campus, I saw the ship, I saw the uniforms, I saw the way that upperclassmen were welcoming me and saying all this stuff. I was, I was amazed how honest they were about the career opportunities and the way, like the, the salary also helps um, of alumni and things like that. And I was just blown away by how hands-on and practical the things that they were teaching were. It's not like the liberal arts education that you would get other places. It's not as theoretical. My major is um, kind of on the theoretical side, but it's, I still turn wrenches. I still go on the ship and participate in all that. And I'm really thankful that I chose Maine Maritime. I think that was a good explanation. And often if you're sort of trying to decide between systems versus technology, for example, Julia hit the nail on the head. Um, the systems, you'll do a little bit more theory, a little bit more design. A tiny bit heavier, maybe a lot of bit heavier on the math, not to scare anybody away by any means. Whereas that technology side, um, you are doing a few more of those practical pieces. It doesn't mean you're getting zero theory and technology or zero hands-on in systems. It's just one might be weighed a little bit heavier just to kind of backfill that. Jacob, how about for you? I know you had kind of a, a brotherly legacy to follow <laughs> for MMA, but why engineering? Yeah, so when I decided to come to MMA, I was actually looking at marine transportation, and I was marine transportation for the entirety of my freshman year, and then I decided I wanted to go engine, and my advice for anybody that's in high school or thinking about coming here and they're not sure what they want to do is you can come here and do one thing, and if you don't like that and you want to switch engine to deck or deck to engine, um, that's always an option. Um, I guess other advice I could give is just talk to, reach out to people that you know that go here. If you don't know anyone, reach out to admissions and just get as much information about each major as possible. Um, so that way you can get, that way you can make the best choices possible. But again, don't feel like, don't feel pressured into making a choice and then being stuck in that major. You can always switch. That's a really nice way to put that. Um, and just to throw this out, I know it's a little bit wonky when you apply to Maine Maritime Academy. You do have to select a major. Please don't be intimidated by that. It's very easy to switch your major up until the point you get here. Or just as Jacob illustrated, try something out. And if you don't like it, you can swap around a little bit. Um, I think Mark kind of had a similar origin story. So I'm going to pass it to Mark next. Why engineering? So. Um... This kind of this kind of started back in in high school. Whenever I was deciding where I was going to go, uh, I went to a high school where it was they they had a maritime class and it was really nice. 
uh, especially being from Houston, because all I've known is being on the water. And um, I was just figuring out, okay, cool, I want to become a captain. So this is the first place I applied to. And uh, once I got in, you know, I was all happy, whatever. Um, but throughout my fall semester, I was struggling in navigation classes and I was slowly realizing, okay, maybe this isn't for me, but all these engineering based classes, because in our freshman year, we can, we, we take, you know, uh, a mix of both classes. Uh, it's just all fundamentals. Uh, I was kind of realizing that, hey, you know, this engineering stuff probably probably is the way to go. And by the time spring semester came out my uh, freshman year, I finally made the switch. And, and I could say it's probably the best choice I made. Um, just to pick up on what Olsen said, there's a <clears throat> there's a huge variety on on what you can do here. So, you know, always explore your options. And, and if you if you come here, you know, just just know that you, you're not set on one thing unless you, you feel that's your passion. So, yeah. Matt, I'm going to have you round us out. And as our resident freshman, you are kind of the closest to remembering making the decision, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So actually, I during high school, I took a lot of physics classes, and it was just something I enjoyed doing. Uh, I worked on cars for ever since I was 10, and I knew that engineering was something that I always wanted to do. And uh, coming here, and just seeing that they had three different engineering programs itself was just amazing knowing that they had all those options for me. I actually came in as a five-year MSE and I changed over to the marine engineering technology. Uh, I didn't want to go too heavy on the math. So uh, that's kind of what steer, steered me away from that. But I, I like turning wrenches and just being in the engine room. So. And that's a good point as well, that technology, be it marine or power, is a little bit in between. Um, that systems, the most math heavy program that we have here, and operations, which I would say is a little bit more hands-on. You, you're gonna have math no matter where you go, it's an engineering program, um, but just something to keep in mind too. And we'll dive a little bit deeper um, into those differences in just a moment. But, yeah, Pass it off the key. sure. Well, I just wanted to mention that um, since we're on this thread, there was a question that was put in the chat, and I'm not sure if all of our attendees were able to see that. Um, but the question was really, what are the differences between the operations major and the technology major? And so we have um, this question was specifically about power engineering operations versus power engineering technology. But in our marine side, we don't have a marine engineering operations student. Um, they just um, we're so busy tonight that we weren't able to um, get one for you, but um, we do have marine engineering technology, marine engineering operations, and the same thing in the power side, power engineering operations, power engineering technology. And so as Elizabeth was expressing, it's kind of a, a stage tiered thing in terms of the math. Um, in terms of the hands-on programming and in terms of the amount of theory and design that you gain um, depending on your major. And so somebody in the systems will come away with the most understanding of the design side. Somebody in the technology will not only get the operations but also some of the theory and the technology behind it. And somebody in the operations really understands the operations of the program um, and the plant that they're working on, whether it's out to sea or ashore, there's incredible job opportunities from all of the majors. Um, but it's really kind of where you want to see yourself after graduation and how um, intensive the math that you um, feel comfortable with coming in and while you're a student here. And so um, now that I've kind of given that explanation, we have a system student, we have a technology student, we have an operations student all in front of us. Um, is there anything else that you guys wanted to add to that um, in terms of how that description was and how you guys wanna, wanna make sure that it's discussed in an appropriate way? I think that was a great description. I just wanted to uh, add one thing. So in summary, the Power engineering operations and power engineering technology is very equivalent to the marine engineering operations and marine engineering technology. The difference between the MEO, MET, PEO, PET is because you take a few more math classes 
for the PET, MET, you get um, what they call accreditation board for engineering and technology. And you're able to sit for your fundamentals of engineering license after you graduate. So because you took those extra classes, you have more potential for a higher license and potentially a higher paying job. But a lot of people end up going marine engineering operations if all they plan on doing is shipping out. They don't care to go shoreside and work in a power plant. They just want to take their classes and get out and ship. Um, that's just one more thing I wanted to add. No, I think that's a, that's a great um, point. And there's no wrong choice. There's absolutely no wrong choice. It's really where you're comfortable as a student and where you want to see yourself in terms of your professional um, trajectory. So we always encourage students to start if they're comfortable either at that systems or that technology level um, because it's much more challenging to start at the operations level and transition into a systems or into that technology degree um, opposed to stepping into that operations program. But by all means, you, there are so many opportunities out there um, for all of our graduates that you can't go wrong. <laughs> you really can't go wrong. Matthew, did, Matt, did you have anything to add? It looked like uh, Yeah, so I was just going to say, even if you do go MEO or PEO, well, really MEO, you can always transfer off no matter if you're if you go a marine major and you spend a one year on a ship and you're like oh i don't want to do this anymore it's really easy to transfer over to a land job that's like so don't don't think just because you go for meo or met or mse you have to be on a ship the rest of your life because that's just not how it is yeah no it's it's great. Yeah, that's so true. Mark, did you have anything to add as that power side? Uh, yes, ma'am. So I can kind of get into the two big differences between the two, uh, PEO and PET. Um, so whenever you, you come into the PEO program, you do your four years uh, and you, you're able to complete your co-ops. Uh, you're, you're required to do two co-ops each and it's the same for PET. And what these co-ops are for, they're internships and but what these are primarily for is are for you to uh, sit down for your steam uh, stationary license test. And basically all that is is for you to get either your fourth class or your third class. And this is where the, that kind of major difference kind of kind of different differentiates the two. Um, PEO can only sit for the fourth class and PT can only sit for the third class. So because PET is more has a, has a little bit more math and science involved, you're, and you're allowed to, to sit for that third class. Uh, whereas if you're PEO and you're, you're just focused on operational with the, with the base math and science, um, you, you can only sit for your fourth class. Mm, yes, good point in terms of that, that licensing structure um, afterwards. Julie, I just wanted to make sure that, um, that we didn't miss anything from the system side. Um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. And there was also a question in the um, question and answer that yeah, um, asked specifically that. about most challenging part of systems engineering and what they should be prepared for. And I guess what I can provide for anybody who's wondering is that systems is, like I said, a lot of theory. When you come, that, that separation between technology operations and systems is the theory. So for instance, um, we take Calc 1 and Calc 2 our freshman year. And then we go on to take engine math, which is like Calc 3, I guess. And then after that, like I'm in differential equations. Um, I've taken statics, dy engineering statics, engineering dynamics, things like that. So, and, um, but the pro side is that we do get a mathematics minor built into our major, which looks really good. So um, I definitely think we have sort of a more challenging math theory structure to it, but it also provides you with more, I, I would say flexibility in your career path because you do have that license, just like MET, MEO, that allows you to go out on ships and do that if you would like, but you can also go shoreside and be a engineer designer or naval architect, you know, things like that. So it does provide you with a little bit of flexibility on career paths. 
the flexibility and career paths is amazing. You guys will have so, have so many opportunities. <laughs> Pretty wild. Um, Elizabeth, I know you're having a little trouble with your um, mute. Are you back? Awesome. I'm going to pass it to you for the next question if you're ready. Yeah, I am. I'm back. I like to hear your answers about what those differences are, because if you look closely at the names of our majors, they are not immediately obvious. <laughs> so I'm not saying you need a linguistics degree to come here, but um, the other kind of thought that I had that I get asked a lot, um, and actually this was a pre-submitted question as well, is how do our mm -hmm. programs stack up with programs from other universities that have names like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, things like that, because our names are different. So in your words, you know, are our programs similar? Are they different? How would you answer that? Do one of you have a, would you like to start? Otherwise I'll call it out. I'll go with you, Jacob, putting you on the hot uh, I guess, uh... I'll start from my so from what I've seen at least your first year, uh, your your first year your classes are definitely very similar amongst all. Uh, if you're in marine operate operations or marine engineering, whichever one you are, you're still taking the same required classes. You still have to take uh, nautical science as a required class, and you also have to take uh, firefighting. So. And then you also have to take fundamentals of engineering and all that. So you're still getting those basic uh, Mariner like knowledge courses uh, as you go through your first year. I like that you started with, you, you begin your coursework with a little bit more of a broader base. I'm gonna turn it to Mark. And uh, to, to kind of piggyback off that, um, we also are taking some of the, I would say, similar uh, coursework when it comes to basics. Like, you know, your first year, you, you kind of start off with your basics, your composition, uh, whatever math you have to take, humanities, um, social science. Um, and what really, what really separates our majors compared to other majors is that we go immediately just more directed towards ship, ship engineering, working on the diesels or for my side, at least, we, we go straight to learning about, you know, steam generators, boilers, stuff, power plants, because that's what that's what our majors are geared towards um, as compared to, let's just say, mechanical um, or electrical engineering. Those are more just uh, more, how would I say it? I guess you can say theoretical stuff like taking taking those more mm, math or science classes. Um, and it just isn't as specific, I guess you can say. How about for Julia or Jacob? So I would say for anybody that's considering engineering, but they're still not sure on what school they want to go to, most say state universities have specific mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, they're specific. Here, I would say all the engineering, because they're geared towards working on a ship or working shoreside in a power plant or somewhere else shore side. We're taking classes to make us well-rounded in everything, mechanical, electrical. Um, for example, we take, or I've taken two electrical classes already. I've taken two physics courses, two calculus courses, um, a bunch of diesel classes, uh, mechanical classes, uh, fluid dynamic, thermal fluid classes. It's much more rounded, so you get a little bit of every type of engineering built into the curriculum, so you come out knowing a lot about everything, pretty much. So I, I think it's the, the best of both worlds. So if you sort of want to come away as that Jack or Jill or uh, of all trades, then it's a nice foundation. Julia, did you want to add to that? If not, no way. I would say another distinction is from like the mechanical engineering degree that you're getting at another school, say like UMaine or something, is that we have a laboratory that's like a ship. That is our laboratory. And every year we work on it, we do maintenance, we do watchkeeping. We have this 
actual thing that we can go down and work on. And so during the summer terms, we will be on that ship learning how to work on a ship and gaining all of this experience. Like um, we also have cadet shipping opportunities, which introduce us to like, maybe some alumni or, you know, people that can hook us up with jobs later on. So these are connections that we're making. I mean, along with the degree that we get when we graduate, we're also making connections in the maritime industry. So I think that also separates us. I know it's not specifically about the degree part, but it is we're becoming very well-rounded, but also very specific to what we are going to do when we get out of the school. It's not just filler stuff. It's this is what we will do when we get out of the school. I like that you mentioned the ship too often. We overlook it, right? So kind of behind me is our 500 foot training vessel. And this is why we were founded, right? Originally to put engineers on vessels. Now we've expanded to include power engineering. But just think about a ship for a second. It's a floating power plant and we have one. <laughs> You're not hooked up to the grid, right? You are responsible for every moving mechanical piece. And if you can perform engineering on ship given those constraints the certainty you can apply those skills to any land-based operation too so it's nice in addition to the ship you know between the steam simulator and diesels I believe you guys reconnect that power right back into the grid too so you are touching feeling doing um, that's what I see every time I talk to students they're like I'm in this and this lab I'm like what <laughs> what are you doing in that lab now so that's what I have there. So I, I see. Um, a, um, I don't, sorry about that. I see there's a there's a question on the Q and A, uh, saying is it possible for PE or PE team majors to work in renewable industry, um, or is it typically only power plants, steam generators, etc.? Um, and to kind of answer that question, yes, it is possible. It's just that during your call times, if you want, if you want, well, actually, it's kind of required, so I can't really say if you want, but. Um, you have to you have to call up at, at um, a steam producing power plant, um, and you have to get those steam hours in only because it's it's part of your your um, internship uh, and part of your degree requirement. But it, during your senior year, you take what we call capstone classes. And right now, since I'm a senior, I'm taking that. And we've been gearing towards a whole lot about renewable energies, and we've been taking field trips to wind farms, uh, hydro dams. Uh, we're going to a waste energy plant. Uh, next week, uh, I also did my co-op at a waste energy plant. You can consider that renewable. Um, and there's there's just many more many more renewable topics that we're going to touch base on before the semester uh, ends. And you know, throughout these these field trips, everybody has asked, asked us so far, is anybody interested in this? And it's kind of like a networking opportunity. So, you know, to answer that, yes, you can work in it. Um, just after after you get out. If you want to go, let's just say into solar, um, you gotta you gotta kind of figure out where you, where you can go, who you gotta talk to, and you know your senior year it, it'll definitely need help. So yeah, I know that uh, one of our MMA grads started one of the largest solar companies um, in Maine, and that sells um, to the solar energy sector um, all over the U.S. So there is that network out there for sure. Thank you for that, Mark. And I think you guys all have touched on this, and especially in that last question. Um, you're having these opportunities to go out into this industry, to make these connections, to go be in this field that you have come here to learn how to do. And so can you guys talk about um, some of those experiences? And I know Matthew, you're in week, what, seven or, or eight of the semester. Um, you haven't had that time to go out to sea yet. Um, but if those that have been out to sea, those that have done co-ops, um, cadet shipping, can you guys talk about some of those experiences um, and what, what it was all about? Turn it to you, Julia <laughs> or Jacob. I'll go first. Yeah. I think I failed to mention during my introduction, I am a senior. So I have been out during our cadet shipping year. You do that your sophomore year. And I've also been on freshman and junior crews. Freshman and juniors go together. Um, so during my cadet shipping, I was on a 831 foot long 
crude oil tanker with Crowley. We made trips up to Valdez, Alaska, and we'd come down and discharge in California and Washington. And on my ship, I had, I think half of all the crew were Maine Maritime Academy grads. So they all were in my shoes at one point. Uh, my crew was really good. Um, I worked long hours, but they were really appreciative. I learned a ton uh, that summer. Um, it's, it's hard to explain how much you actually learn on the training ship state of Maine and during your cadet shipping, because it's everything you've been learning in the classroom directly put into action, hands-on, practical, applicable, and it just makes so much more sense when you're out there. Uh, so I came away with a lot of knowledge from both cruises and cadet shipping, and I could go on and on and talk about it, but pass it off to uh, Julia. Well, before you do, can you talk about your um, leadership role on the ship this past yeah. year? Is that uh, my current leadership role here at school is cadet chief engineer. So pretty much what that entails is being in charge of all engine watch standards, both while the ship is at the dock and when we go out on cruise. So I have additional uh, roles and responsibilities um, that I have both here and at sea. So as a student here, you not only get to learn how to do this stuff, you are doing this stuff. You're walking the walk and talking the talk. It's pretty incredible. Julia, can you um, follow that one with <laughs> what, what you've done and where you've been maybe? Um, yeah, so I'm a junior and I have done freshman cruise and cadet shipping so far. Um, I obviously um, freshman cruised with the TSOM and as a freshman, you're just kind of learning the introductory stuff about everything, but it's still very hands-on. Like you learn how to, like, I don't, I don't expect anybody to know certain terms because when I came here, I was complete. I'd never even driven a car, never looked at an engine, never turned a wrench, didn't touch anything. And it's been a very transformative experience. <laughs> so, <laughs> needless to say, I've done so much with um, the practical aspects and, you know, welding, soldering, like so much stuff that I can't even put into words. And I could have shipped with Crowley also um, on a tinker in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And um, yeah, we were doing product. Um, and it's so amazing to see our reputation coming out of Maine Maritime, because as soon as I got there, they were like, you're from Maine? That's awesome. Like, I know this person and this person and this person, and Maine makes great engineers. And I think that really helps me uh, get in good with the crew. Um, just being from Maine, having that on my resume. So I think that was a great experience to see. Um, we also did a lot of hands, like every day we're doing something. It's literally like, we are the ones that keep the ship afloat. So you're always doing something, always uh, maintaining something, working with your hands, it's really crazy and awesome to see. So um, yeah, I definitely recommend that. And if you're a student looking at Maine Maritime from maybe New York or Massachusetts or California where they have their own maritime uh, academies, I would, I would definitely recommend Maine because we like to focus our students on tra tracing systems. Um, and if you don't know what that means, maybe it's we sit them down with a piece of paper and we make them like go through each and every system with a pencil and they learn. And that I've heard from my cadet shipping experience is what separates us is that we understand the actual um, coming together of how the system works. And it's not just, oh, this is a valve, this is a engine, whatever. Like we understand how the whole thing works. And I think that helps us excel more with our academics and practical hands-on. Is that um, that hand over hand learning that you do on the ship when you're learning to trace those sy systems? You physically put your hands on the pieces and you figure out where go everything goes, which way. That was one of the first things um, that actually somebody approached me about at a college fair. They were like, you still do that hand over hand. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I asked the students and they were like, yes, this is what we do before a pre-cruise. 
and really that process of learning how to learn the systems, learning how to draw those is what allows you to quickly apply those to any new situation, any new ship, any new power plant. So I like that you mentioned that you're like, you're touching. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, thank you, Julia. That is um, a really fantastic account of kind of what stands our school apart. All the, all the maritime schools are really good at what we do and we all produce students with these licenses, but it's your style of learning um, and how you get to that end goal um, is different between the different schools. And so it's finding the one as a prospective student that will fit your goals and your learning style the best. Um, and that's really important. Mark, can you talk about your uh, co-op that you participated in? Sure can. Um, so this this past summer, the, I actually went through my first co-op. Uh, with me being a senior, I'm only I'm supposed to be doing two, uh, but due to COVID, that kind of set me back. Um, so I'm on track for next summer. But uh, I went to a waste energy plant down in Concord, New Hampshire, working with Willard Bridge Technologies, and um, it was really cool because um, one the the amount that I learned uh, comparing it to I guess you can say just learning it from class, it just really just made much more sense, even though, you know, I guess you can kind of say I'm more of a more of a hands on guy than a book smart guy or than reading a book or whatever. But um, during the summer, I just I got to get hands on on everything. And, you know, the my my managers and all that, they can really tell the difference from a, a, main, a main maritime kid compared to any other intern they, they've had, because like Julia, Julia said, the first thing I did was can I see your manuals? Can I see this, this, that? And then I just went and started tracing systems within, you know, like the first couple of weeks, first month actually. And um, they were they were just beyond shocked. They said, oh, well, you know how to trace your systems. And I said, yeah, I sure can. Um, and it, it, it kind of just, you know, turned out to be a great, great experience overall. And the, you know, like I said, the amount that I learned is just, oh my goodness, I can't wait to go back basically. But uh, the, these co-ops for us at least are just setting us up to just be successful, help us with networking and to just overall, uh, I guess you can say come, come full circle when it comes to what you learn in class compared to uh, in the industry. Comes full circle. That's a really good way of putting it. It does. Comes full circle. So Matthew, I know that um, you haven't dove into this co-op world yet um, or even gone on cruise, but is there something that you're looking forward to? Is there a, you know, a style, a ship or um, a trajectory that you're like super itching to go do um, in your, your time here at May Maritime? Uh, yeah, so I've actually been around the maritime business for a while. Uh, my father deals with it a lot and I'm very interested in uh, either going out on a tanker for Crowley or uh, going out on an oil drilling ship and uh, getting into that part of the business. Uh, just because it's something that I've always thought was cool and how they do it and all the systems that are involved are very intricate. And it's just something that I think that it'd be a, a cool experience to do and something that's important to just learning about the whole maritime business. That's awesome. I, well, we'll check in with you and um, do a whole nother webinar in a couple of years and you'll be able to tell us all about it. How about that? Because right. we know you're going to go do up some really amazing things. Um, Elizabeth, I'm going to pass it to you for the next question. So I have a question. Maybe some of you in the audience have noticed that some of our students are in uniform, some are not. <laughs> um, just to speak a little bit to that regimental piece, to that uniform piece. Maybe the question could be something as broad as, well, what, what, you know, why would I want to be in the regiment versus why would I not be? You'll notice the three marine engineering students that we have, they, they are in the regiment, they are in the uniform, whereas Mark and power engineering is not required to be in the regiment. However, of course, you can always opt in, you can volunteer to participate, um, just like Jacob with his leadership role on campus. The voluntary regimental students have access as well, where I would say equal opportunity to, to become those student leader positions on campus. The difference then is what you do over your summer. 
Obviously, Mark did not spend his summer aboard a vessel, whereas Julia and Jacob did. But if you could speak to maybe, um, you know, that regimental piece, how does that, you know, play into your major? And then Mark, for you, because he actually started in the regiment, spoiler, <laughs> why did you choose a non-regimental piece? But if Julia, do you want to kick it off sort of, maybe if you want to start, you know, with kind of what is the regiment? Why is it there? You know, how does that play into your classes? The regiment of Nichippen is a community basically that structures uh, students and prepares them for the maritime industry through discipline and training. And so what I will say is that if you're a freshman coming in, you will undergo sort of like a preparatory training um, and the upperclassmen will guide you and help you become uh, a mariner, basically. It's like somebody who is able to stand watch. Um, you know, the maritime industry is dangerous and any industry is dangerous, but specifically we need to make sure that we are being good shipmates to each other. Um, and that's a huge part of the regiment is coming together as a community and um, being a good shipmate, shipmate. And so it's all about, you know, training for safety, um, accountability, um, how, like gear accountability too. So the reason that we wear uniforms is, I mean, in my, in my thing, I think it looks good and everybody looks good in khakis, but um, the other part to it is also, you know, it's professionalism and it's also, you know, the little things like even the little parts of um, being on a ship, if you mess those up, you know, something bad could happen. So that's kind of my interpretation of what the regiment means. It's preparing us for a dangerous industry that can be perfectly safe if we just um, are trained correctly. So um, that's my piece. That's a good frame um, because if you think about it again, floating power plant. <laughs> so there are potentially many hazards out at sea, not to deter you. And I like how Julia highlighted once you're trained properly, then you kind of know all those different pieces. Jacob, would you like to add to that? Sure. So big picture for everyone joining us who's not familiar with the regiment is if you're going the maritime route, so, or uh, I'm sorry, marine, marine engineering, whether that's technology operations, uh, five-year systems, the Coast Guard requires that you be in the regiment. So it's not optional for a licensed track. Anybody wishing to get their unlimited license third engineer or unlimited third mate license has to go through the Coast Guard regimented program. Now, I think it was touched on earlier, you can join the regiment voluntarily. You could come here for business or marine science and still join the regiment. And the difference again is what you do during the summers primarily. So in the regiment, we have formation, uh, we call it muster every morning, Monday through Friday, and everybody comes together. We have different companies. You're assigned a company uh, when you come in freshman year. We have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta, and you're with your respective company for the duration of your time here. So we come to formation at 7.10 in the morning. That's when it starts, and you form up with your company. So I'm Charlie Company. And because I'm in an extra leadership position as a senior, I actually help run muster. Uh, but you come to muster, it's just part of what you do. And then there's some other small extra things that you have to do as part of being in the regiment. But what it really comes down to is how well can you manage your time? And honestly, that's part of, I think, the Coast Guard's goal on why we have the regiment. Freshman year, you'll find if you choose to be in the regiment, it's more stressful than say sophomore, junior or senior year, just because you have a lot more thrown at you and you have to juggle school, regiment, any other extracurriculars that you're doing. Um, so that, that's big picture. Uh, we don't need to get into the details, but uh, continue to ask questions. We have the Q&A um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Matthew, who is a first year regiment. Uh, yeah, so 
Right now, I'm actually a mug, which is a midshipman under guidance. And as Julia mentioned, I went through that regimental training period where it was one week for me. We stayed on the ship and we just got to stick with our companies and they taught us all these regimental values. Uh, I'd say the regiment is one of the best things that could have happened to me as a college student. In high school, I wasn't very organized. The regiment has really forced me to get there uh, with both type, time management and just getting stuff done on time. Uh, so uh, also it's the most friends you'll ever make in such a short period. Like that first week that you spend with those 20 to 40 kids that you get to know every single one of them. Like I could go and knock on any one of their doors and ask them for help with anything and they would say yes. So I definitely recommend, even if you're not one of those required regiment programs, just join the regiment. It's honestly, it's not that big. A, I mean, there's still a time require, uh, like requirement, but it's not something that you should really fret about there. You can, as long as you're keeping up with everything in school, uh, you should be doing good. I just want to add, you guys have had such an excellent uh, description of the regiment. Um, the licensing that um, these guys are getting in that maritime Coast Guard engineering license, and then the students that would be getting kind of that parallel track in the deck license would probably take somebody 20 to 25 years, if not a little longer, to get that same license if they did not attend a school like Maine Maritime Academy. So our students are getting the same license after four years. They're getting that same amount of responsibility. They're going to be in charge of millions or trillions of dollars in cargo, um, maybe thousands of human lives out on a cruise ship. And so, and even if it's one additional life, um, your crewmate on um, a ship and you're not taking passengers, you're in charge of these things that come with immense responsibility. And so that regimental piece is incredibly important to gain that responsibility um, after such a short amount of time, because you're coming into these leadership roles that most other students graduating from college will never even imagine the amount of responsibility um, that our students are gonna be taking on. So just it's an incredible thing um, but you guys have all put it so beautifully in terms of the thread of the regiment and why why we have it um, but mark if you can talk about kind of your start and where you are now it'd be great so when i was a freshman uh since i came here for for transportation i had to be in the regiment uh totally because uh that that's a requirement um it was a great learning experience as well. I would say hey, I, I learned a whole lot, I guess you can say, when it, came, when it came to just becoming a better person overall. When it, you know, the regiment really helped me just, I don't know, it just set the, set the bar high for me, I guess you can say, just because I, I learned so many things personally, mentally, physically. Um, I was capable of those things, I guess you can say, uh, than I thought I was ever going to be able to, to say I was, I, you know. Um, and throughout my, my co-op, uh, just one, one huge example, because I, as you can tell now, I'm not part of it, but here my co-op, you know, since you're in industry, you still have to be well-kept. You have, you have to have excellent time management. You have to be able to be clean shaven, which I'm not right now, but I'm also not working. So please, uh, bear with me. Um, you have to, you have to, you have to keep up the par and, you know, throughout my time there, the, you know, it, it all just becomes a, a big deal where if you're not clean shaven, that becomes a safety factor. If you're not managing your time well, well, how are you going to run this plant? How are you going to be able to, to operate on this this system if it, if it ever goes out? It, and, you know, since since you're producing power, on, on, on in my case, since you're producing power and you're selling it to the grid, um, you know, something goes down, you have to, you have to make sure that you're, you're able to complete this before the, your shift's done or before, you know, just as fast as you can be while doing it efficiently and, and safely, of course. And the regiment kind of just help, help, you know, 
teach those things. And, you know, I'm glad that I was part of it, you know, in the, in the beginning. And now I would say if, if you are coming in, you want to be PEO, PT, um, I, I, I would strongly recommend it just because of those, those things. But if you feel it isn't for you, then, you know, it is optional. And it's just another thing that could just, you know, help you overall. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I, that's a really good point. We had um, a panel on Tuesday night and the, the sentiment was, join the regiment, it'll get your life together. So <laughs> um, it, it sounds like it's very much that thread that you guys were talking about. It really kind of pulls it all together and just has one more thing to keep you organized um, to make sure that you're doing the best you can in the classroom and out of the classroom with everything that you've got. Um, so. So I appreciate all your, your questions on that. Um, we only, only have about 10 minutes left. So I wanted to throw really a, a fun question at you guys. And what is your dream job? What is it that you wanna do um, with your degree? Where do you wanna see yourself in you know, five years, 10 years, 15 years? And maybe you don't know, maybe you're still trying to figure that out. Um, but if you do know, let us know. Or Mix something up because you guys have a world out there of opportunities and there's nothing stopping you. Your degrees are going to take you in so many different places. Um, so I would just love to hear, where do you want to, where do you want to go with this? <laughs> Who wants to start? Matthew? Uh, I guess I can oh. start. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I beat, I beat you to it. I beat you to it. I'm kind of excited about this. One. Um, <laughs> um, so with me, uh, I, I want to go back to where I worked at this past summer working, working, uh, waste energy. Uh, me personally, it's, it's a really debatable topic, um, but me personally, I do consider it a renewable energy. Um, so is this anything renewable? I'm, I'm, re I'm highly interested in. This is number one. Number two is working in a hydro dam. Um, there's a lot of them in Maine. There's a lot of them back home where I'm from in Houston, in Texas, um, just in there they're throughout the throughout the place. Um, eventually, I do want to work towards uh, working on steam turbines or, steam gen or uh, gas turbines. Uh, kind of just specializing in them. So uh, I'd probably have to stay in the route that I am working with waste energy because we deal with the steam turbine. And then I could eventually go on and, and go that route. Um, but those are kind of the three main things where I want to end up going. Overall, I know it's going to be a great choice, whatever I do. So I'm pretty excited for that. It will be a great choice. Thanks, Mark. Matt, did you want to go? It looked like you were uh, at it too. Yeah. <laughs> So I know this is probably the furthest away for, for me at least, but uh, I, I want to retire as a chief engineer and I don't ever want to stop working, but eventually I will retire. And then I want to go open up my own mechanic shop and I want to keep working with my hands. I, engineering is something that I love and I never want to stop doing it. And he's only um, been here seven weeks. <laughs> and you will retire as a chief engineer. I know you're going to get there. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, and that pathway forward will be really well laid out for you. Yeah. Jacob, did you want to go or, or Julia? Either one. I can go next. Yeah. You're, well, the, you're the closest to chomping at this. <laughs> Might be a little scary of a question then. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't say I have really a dream job right now. I plan on taking the first uh, third assistant engineer job that's offered to me after I graduate. And I plan on probably shipping for six to eight years and then coming shoreside and starting my own business. And I'm playing with a few different ideas, but I'm leaning towards a refrigeration slash heat pump business. Um, those are becoming very popular in uh, Northern New England and technicians get paid a lot to install them. And it's something that we actually learned quite a bit about in some of our classes at school. So I'm already on track to uh, know a lot about that. And those guys get paid really well. Well, and we have those business courses here. You can sneak in as some of your electives to lay that foundation. That's awesome. Well, you'll be able to do that too. That Let us know when you're doing that. <laughs> we might need those heat pumps at that time. <laughs> Julia. Um, yeah, um, by the way, just one more thing. There is one more major. Um, it's Marine Systems four year. It's like my major, but it's non-licensed. I just, I forgot to mention it. It's, 
I would recommend you do five year because then you can always like drop back down to four year if you want. But just mentioning, you don't have to be in the regimen if your systems because there's a four year program. Um, and yes, that's. Um, can I'm just gonna say that. Julia is absolutely correct. There's that four-year systems program and the five-year systems program. The four-year systems program does not get the license. The five-year program does. And so if you have any more questions about the intricacies between why we have three different tracks that all lead to the same um, Coast Guard license, contact us um, directly and we can go into some of those details because in the last five minutes, it's not going to be happening. <laughs> Come to a tour. The what? Come to a tour. Come, yes, Matt. Matt will tour you around and he'll tell you all the intricacies. But Julia, no, it's if you can answer where you want to be. Um, I'm thinking, I mean, obviously that's the goal to be a chief engineer somewhere. I'm thinking about shipping out for maybe like four or five years and then transitioning to shoreside as maybe hopefully like a naval architect sort of thing. I'm not entirely sure yet there's a lot of options for us so it's still still a lot to go on um and then obviously um the thing that people don't know about being a marine engineer is that you have a lot of time off like you don't have the nine to five job every single day you just ship out for like two months maybe come back have two months of your own free time off still get paid a lot yeah so a lot of people don't know that but you have a lot of downtime so i'm gonna be a paramedic firefighter right so there's a lot of stuff you can do with your time because it's not a nine to five, you know, ugh, Monday's job. So <laughs> you put it so perfectly. It's true. It's resume. No. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that are not Monday fans, going out to sea will be perfect for you. <laughs> it's um, you're gonna a lot of these positions, it's equal time out to sea is equal time away uh, back at, back ashore. So if you're going to go out for three months, you get three months home um, to be able to do these things that you're going to have that income to be able to do and the time to be able to do it. So if you enjoy going, um, traveling around the world, you're going to have that time and that income to do it. If you enjoy going, uh, you know, flipping houses, by all means, go do that. Um, so you'll have all these opportunities. Elizabeth, did you have something to add? It sounded like you might have wanted to jump in there really quick. I changed my name to my email. So if anybody has questions after this, definitely reach out um, to me afterwards. We can continue the conversation or connect you with one of our students um, and they can help flush out any of these ideas that you've heard. Can you hear me okay? I'm not sure yeah. if my working. Um, the last thing I was gonna say is we have just a couple of minutes left. I don't wanna keep our students away or maybe you all from homework. Um, sorry to kind of bring down the mood. But in our last two minutes, we'll kind of give you each maybe 10, 20 seconds or less. Um, what is sort of one piece of advice, one thing that you wish you had known back when you were a senior applying to colleges or a junior kind of choosing schools? <laughs> All right, we'll rock, paper, scissors for you. Ready? Uh, I'll go. So uh, take that, uh, take those calc classes. You definitely don't want to be stuck in pre-calc. It's especially if you've taken pre-calc before, you're just looking at, at a lot of it. But if you take those AP calc classes, those college level courses, you can get out of those uh, pre-calc class. That's a good one. It looked like you had scissors next, so. <laughs> um, my biggest advice uh, would probably just be to um, follow follow where you where you think is going to be best for you. Um, you know, because you never know where you're going to end up, right? And me personally, I can say that I followed where I was going to go because I could have gone to anywhere back home. Um, but something about Mary Maritime spoke to me, and I was like, okay, cool. This is the this is my route. Now, of course, I didn't end up staying in transportation side. I'm a PEO, but just knowing that I stuck to what I was, what I wanted to do, and ended up doing something that kind of relates, and it's still at the same school that I really wanted to go to as a kid. Uh, well, not as a kid, but like in high school, and just uh, having this option to to continue my my education here, um, just really really helped me out a lot, and I'm really thankful for it. So. 
follow your heart, basically. Follow your Jacob? heart. Good one. Good advice, Mark. I'd say uh, just be passionate about what you want to do. Um, I guess at this point, a lot of you probably don't know exactly what you want to do. Um, but when you do, when you do make that decision, um, just be passionate about it and uh, push yourself to always do more. Um, just when I feel like I have no time in my schedule, I find myself taking on something else. So you're really capable to do a lot. And at this school, you know, the more you take on, the more experiences you get doing things, the better off you're going to be in the end. And uh, that's what sets the school apart from other schools, not just maritime schools, but all over the country. So just push yourself and uh, good luck making your decision. And Julia? Um, I would just say that um, enjoy Maine Maritime while you're still here. It's an awesome experience. If you decide to come, which you definitely should, but I will say it's a transformative experience. They take you from, you know, some person off the street into a good, a better person, a good shipmate, respectful, good time management. I say that's probably the best, the biggest thing to focus, focus on, on a, as a freshman um, is just planning out your day every single day. Like, do I have to iron because I'm in the regiment? I should iron my chambray. I should shine my shoes. Oh, I can work on some calc homework here and there. Like, try and get yourself in that mindset before you come on campus because that's sort of the expectation that you'll be held to. Um, and it's going to serve you well for the rest of your life. A lot of grown adults can't manage their time. So that's something that, you know, try early on to get that time management skills down. You guys are really good at giving advice. There's no, a lot I was taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we appreciate everybody sticking around um, for this entire hour. And so thank you. We got to get you guys off to go doing your homework, speaking of time management, um, before it gets too late. And so going forward, if anybody has any questions, reach out to myself, reach out to Elizabeth, reply to those emails that gave you the Zoom links. Um, we will get you whatever information you need. And um, Thank you. Thank you again for watching. Have a good night, everyone.